Welcome back to another UNC Tar Heels basketball recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you're watching us on our fast growing YouTube channel, that is called Tar Heel Illustrated. I am THI publisher Andrew Jones, and joining me is our director of basketball recruiting, longtime AAU college and high school coach David Sisk. And David, today is signing day for the early signing period, which means four. Future Tar Heel basketball players are putting pen to paper, signing their letters of intent to play for Hubert Davis and the Tar Heels. And we're going to go through those four. We have talked a lot about these kids over the last six to eight months, really the last year. And today it's official. They are formally, officially Tar Heels. So let's go ahead and roll through it, David. Uh, let's ahead. begin with Seth. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said, let's do it. All right. Sound with Seth Trimble. Four-star point guard, six foot, 385 pounds from Menominee Falls High School in Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. If Carolina fans say that sounds familiar, you might remember J.P. Tokoto was from the same place because they're brothers. He's the number 32 player nationally overall in the class, the number seven at his position, committed to North Carolina on June 23rd. He's the highest rated player in his class, David. So your thoughts on, on Seth Trimble? You know, the more I see of him, uh, just from videos, fall league videos and, and things like that, his his athleticism, yeah. you know, they, he they show his dunks. He's just, you know, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hit in social media of all his highlight between the leg, I mean, his slam dunk contest stuff. So, you know, he's brings just uh, – next level athleticism to North Carolina. And he obviously knows how to play the point guard spot. I felt like um, he might go up the rankings more over the summer than what he did. Um, so I was kind of surprised when he didn't, because I, I thought he might eventually get to a five-star status. Uh, but uh, in, in a number, not just rivals in, in a, a lot of the other uh, rankings too, it was kind of the same way. Uh, so who knows in high school, you know, a lot of these guys that make the moves in high school and go up to rankings, they're playing at national brands. And, you know, the one thing that you see with, uh, you know, North Carolina, uh, right now, you know, that the players that they have, they're, they're like local high schools. Um, so, you know, they're, they're probably won't get seen as much. Uh, if they don't go up the rankings during the high school season, it's no fault of their own because they're not at a Montverde or Oak Hill or, you know, somewhere like that where they're playing on ESPN once a week and in and, and these big national events where all the recruiting media is there. So yeah. I, I think probably what you see is what you get with rankings. But, you know, he's still top, even with that, a top 35 player. Uh, but like I said, just kind of knows how to play the game, knows how to play the position and just – off the charts athleticism. So when you're talking about a bigger point guard who's going to be a who's not going to get athleted at any point in college and, and comes in knowing how to play the position, you know, there's a that checks a lot of boxes. There is some debate uh, by some people say, hey, he's more a two and not a one, or he's a combo guard. And everyone likes to throw out the combo guard thing because they think you're pigeonholing a kid by saying he's just a point guard, inferring he can't shoot. Or if you call him a shooting guard, you're inferring that he can't handle the ball. So everyone wants to be called a combo guard these days. Do you see Seth Trimble as a two, as a one, or as a combo guard? I see him as a point. Now, I'm not saying he can't play combo. I, I think sometimes all that gets overrated because I think coaches want to put as many ball handlers out on the floor as they can. Yeah. So whether they're a point guard, whether a two guard, I mean, you can go back and think, uh, you know, I watched Baylor last year and I'm trying to figure out which one's the point guard and which one's the two guard. They all look pretty doggone good with the ball in their hands, you know? So I, I think in today's game, a point guard does a couple things, probably, you know, leads to break and, and comes down or maybe calls a set, but a lot of teams don't do set. So I think basically – the ball handling comes down to who's got the ball in her hands the last 10 seconds of the shot clock when you either isolate or go into a ball screen. Uh, but, you know, probably can do both. I, if I had to take one, though, an either or, I would say point guard simply from for the reason uh, we don't know about his outside shooting yet. You know, I, I, I would just want a two guard to be able to shoot, stroke the ball. So, oh, before and, and, 
I think too, let me say one other thing. Yeah. I think too, if you look at Hubert's recruiting with some other guys, uh, you know, it looks like they went a lot more in for the wing and, you know, they really didn't go after a whole lot of other point guards. Yeah. So, um, you know, in that class and, and, and didn't try to, wasn't like they got him and they were trying to get any others. So it looks to me like they probably made a commitment, commitment with him handling the ball. Yeah, I think so. And before we go into the other three, he's a bouncy player. Do you like bouncy point guards? And do you think a bouncy point guard in a more spread offense makes a lot of sense, especially when you're talking about the shot clock winding down, what a bouncy kid, that point, I guess three times I've used that word, can do in those situations as opposed to what might be a more traditional point guard that people have in mind? Well, absolutely. I like athleticism and bounciness. You know, it's something like somebody asked me the other day if I like chocolate. You know, <laughs> God. Well, some people like the some people like the dribble, strong, cat, a pass and cut away kind of point guard, which is more a thing of maybe the '80s and '90s. But they're still out there now. Like Joel Berry wasn't super bouncy, but he got the job done. Well, let me ask you this: If you're not a strong outside shooter, uh, and we don't know, he may be. But I'm just looking at numbers from Peach Jam and yeah. some other things, and that's been the the body of work we have to go by. So I'm yeah. I'm going by what I know. Um, I mean, you better be able to put it on the floor, yeah. and, and you better be able to go buy some people. So, you know, everybody doesn't have to be a great shooter. Everybody doesn't have to be able to put it on the floor, but you need to have a mixture. You yeah. know, if you're going to have shooters lined up around the the arc you've got to have somebody that can get the ball in the lane draw the defense so um yeah i, I think hubert obviously he's already shown he likes depth so i yeah. think they want to be able to put different combinations of things on the floor jalen washington is a four-star uh, forward six foot eight 190 pounds west side high school gary indiana Number 50 nationally committed to North Carolina on July 9th. He dropped quite a bit because he was injured in the summer. You talked to him in the summer, and then I believe it was – I'm not sure if it was Georgia or Alabama or one of the two. Birmingham, so, okay. Birmingham. Yeah, and, and then he dropped a little bit more, and now he's had um, – I guess he's had surgery. He's got a lot of stuff going on physically. Aside from the injury, tell people what kind of player – uh, you have seen from Jalen Washington, and then we'll address the injury situation. You know, there's been so many injuries, and a lot of the the film clips you saw was was kind of earlier in the career. Um, you know, you saw some things in the spring, but man, I'm telling you, players from the spring to July can just really take off. I saw him in the and, and we did a film review of it in the semifinals of the Peach Jam. You know, when Mean Streets played uh, Bradley Bill. And, uh, you know, he had been out. He And he'd played some, and his numbers were off. And you're like, what in the world's going on here? You know, is, is, why is the contribution so low? And there have been some games where he hadn't played a whole lot of minutes. And you got to remember at Peach Jam, you were playing two straight weeks. So they were like on game – they played two weeks, like seven games. Yeah. They started out in a pool of 40. They played seven games. They dropped it to 24, and they played seven more. It may have been six. It was six or seven. And then they go to a round of eight, so they're playing quarterfinals and semifinals. So he was in either game 14 or 15 in, in two weeks' time. So they were playing a game a day. Not a whole lot of rest. You know, I think they were really sparing with minutes. You know, and I don't blame them. It's a good move. You know, you don't want to hurt a kid, get a kid hurt. Yeah. Uh, so when they had to have him in an elimination game, it was a televised game on ESPN. And uh, Brad Bill was really good. Brandon Miller was, uh, you know, one of their, their bigger players that kind of matched up with him. I thought Jalen was tremendous. I thought he had a good-looking shot. It caught me off guard. I really wasn't expecting that. Had a good-looking shot outside. Thought he handled. I thought he passed it well. Had good court vision. Uh, really kind of uh, could really kind of go from that mid post, put the ball on the floor and get somewhere with it. Good rebounder, lengthy. Uh, looked like he guard the perimeter a little bit. And I still saw people say, "Well, I'm not 
and then I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about rivals guys. I'm talking about some people that I talk to nationally. And you talk about players to different people to try to get, you know, to a, a uh, like I say, a full body of work and, and, and uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, what's the words I'm thinking about, just opinions on players. And there were still people out there that weren't so sure and didn't like him. We'll see. I, I, they may be right. I may be wrong. But, I, man, what I saw at that Peach Jam game, I, I really liked in saying, you know, this is a kid from size and able to do some things athletically and he has good skill who can step right in and play uh, in the ACC and can be that type of player. I, I don't see a kid to me that would drop 20 or 30 spots. But I understand you're comparing him with other players who played a lot through the summer, we're out there playing every day. So I understand those things. I know how that works. But that really doesn't have a bearing if he's healthy when he gets in college. It really doesn't have a bearing on how he's going to be, you know, when he gets there on that level. Do you know what his current uh, situ health situation is? Well, we've, heard, we've heard different things, and I don't totally – trust some of the uh, reporting that we've heard about his situation. Chicago, Chicago is going to start, you know, later on. So we're going to see uh, about that right now and, and then see once the season, uh, you know, goes exactly how he is. But, you know, he's had some time off and some time to prepare. So, you know, he's not in a situation in any way where people are going to be able to see him publicly. So I think we're going to learn more once the season starts. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't – well, you and I have talked about rumor mills on this stuff. When it comes yeah. to things like that, I don't really trust it exactly. until you start the high school. If they have the high school game and he comes out and he's playing two or three minutes, then, yeah, I, I – I yeah. get it. Yeah, because they don't have the media relations stuff in high school like we do in college. So you're there's a, just a lot of stuff that hits social media, and some people take it seriously. And, and I'm with you. I will wait and see what happens when his high school season starts, and and then we'll we'll report. We'll get some information, and we'll we'll pop it on our boards. Which, by the way, you can access if you're a premium subscriber to our site for just eight dollars and thirty three cents a month. We just finished a promo where you could have checked us out for free for a month. So if you missed that. Still only 833 months of going over there and check us out. Uh, Will Shaver, three star center, six foot 10, 245 pounds, number 124 nationally, moved up a little bit with the most recent ranking, number 19 in his position from Oak Mountain High School in Birmingham, Alabama, committed to Carolina June 2nd. While I was in a Bay Oriole store in Camden Yards, I get a text from Dina that he just committed. It's like, oh, good stuff. Hubert's uh, rocking and rolling right out of the gate. And his situation is a little bit interesting that we'll get to in a couple of minutes about when he's arriving in Carolina. First, tell everybody what kind of player Will Shaver is. And you saw him in person back in uh, the, 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 the summer as well. Will was kind of hit or miss. He played on a, a, an Under Armour, uh, kind of like a, a AAA level of Under Armour, you might say. Uh, they called it the Rise. So they weren't one of the national travel teams. And when I saw them play, you know, they were playing some of the, uh, of the travel teams who had a lot more talent. And one thing I said, it was frustrating because – a lot of times he's down on a block or he's open and they just simply didn't have guards that could get him the ball. Yeah. So, and, and then, um, after, so I'm in, uh, Atlanta Cartersville for two or three days. And then I turn around a uh, well Thursday, Friday, and then I turn around that Friday evening and go to Birmingham. So I'm in Birmingham Hoover Saturday and Sunday doing two days to Adidas and then the prep hoops tournament that Jalen was in. So I've actually was in three venues in four days. Um, and I heard he really played well that weekend. And I'm just like, man, I would like to have seen him when he was playing, you know. Um, but and, and you just didn't quite, you just didn't quite get to see that. Um, and you know, when you're playing in in, the, in Alabama, there's no other really kids that size. I mean, he's a big kid. Um, but so, and, and I think, you know, now he's going, you know, early, you know, he's supposed to be in, in, on campus second semester, obviously that'll give him an extra, 
semester and extra time to really learn a system to get to play with uh, the team, you know, and, and, and scrimmage and practice with those guys. And that's not going to do nothing but make you better. But um, the thing uh, about him is, like I said, I, uh, the minute I talked to him, I was like, this is guy I'm pulling for. And if you remember us talking about that, yeah. such a good kid. And, and the thing was, he was so realistic and he was like, look, I know I'm not, you know, nobody's going to Paulo Paolo Bancaro or somebody like that. Nobody's going to confuse me with him. I understand that. But what I'm going to do is, you know, whatever coach Davis wants me to do, if he wants me to run through a wall, if he wants me to do nothing but screen, if he wants me to do nothing but rebound, whatever he wants me to do, I'm going to accept my role and I'm going to stick with it. I'm not going to complain. If I play one minute a game, that's fine with that. And I'm going to work and work and work till he has to pay me more. So everything that, uh, you know, that I have to accomplish and want to try to accomplish there, it's not on him that owe me playing time. It's on me to earn it. Yeah. So I think he's kind of sees maybe, you know, a year or two of really progressing. And we talked about this before. You know, I remember – when I was a kid, and I don't know if you do or not, but, you know, when I was a kid and teenager, and I'm just throwing a shot out there at gender. But anyway, you remember when kids went back then when there weren't any one and duns or two and duns, and you know when you went to college, it was a four-year deal. So you got a kid and you looked at him and you say, all right, all right, this kid here, by the time he's a junior, he's going to yeah. be really, really good. When you watched them develop, and nobody panicked because a kid came in as a freshman and wasn't a big contributor. Now everybody's, oh, we won't transfer poor. What's his deal? <laughs> Why he not? Or, or, or what's wrong with that kid? Yeah, and, and back in the in the eighties, seventies, eighties, nineties, even that was accepted. You know, you you work with your coach and you got better and better and you developed into a player. And that's what made the Bob Knights and the Dean Smiths and coaches like that was was just it wasn't player development to in order to get guys ready for the pros. When you hear player development now, it's like, okay, who yeah. can get you know that max contract in the NBA or get me drafted? Back then, player development was who could turn me in eventually to a really good college player where I can have a solid career in college. And he's kind of a throwback in that. Now, I think that's refreshing. Now, he's enrolling in Carolina in January. And, you know, there is some debate about whether or not there's va there's more value in just getting a head start getting in there, getting the weight training program, getting conditioned to play at the speed Carolina wants to play versus staying in high school, competing in games and competing for something meaningful and continuing to develop that way. What is your take on what you think might be more beneficial for somebody like him? Well, I, I, I'll answer it in two ways. And um, I don't know if I said this originally when we, we have talked about the, the recruiting before, but I was at uh, – we were at a uh, team camp in June at, at the University of North Alabama and a high school team. And our junior varsity actually played Oak Mountain. And um, I talked to the coaches about him. And at that time, he was going to IMG, if you'll remember. He yeah, I do remember that. that first before he went to um, – before he went to North Carolina. So that was – and the coaches were really supportive um of him doing that um and and they, they understood so there was no hard feelings there was no and this was totally off the record it's just two good coaches in there talking and, and there's no criticism whatsoever um but you know IMG like I say those schools offer a national stage national tournaments playing against the best so I felt – I really thought after he decided and, I, and IMG was going to take him, I thought that was interesting. I could see it more transferring from Oak Mountain and deciding to go in North Carolina early than I could IMG. So that caught me off guard. But as far as players going early, if they think that's in their best interest, I support it. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, 
the team we coach here in high school, we had a kid um, who would have been district player of the year. We had a really good team that year. We were in, we were in uh, uh, one point of going to the, you know, state tournament and uh, he was our best player. He would have been MVP in the district and he was a quarterback. Also, he got a uh, offer from Murray state to play quarterback and uh, he took it and uh, decided just weeks before the season started that he was going to enroll in January because he thought he might have a chance to, to, to come in and play quarterback at, at Murray <laughs> state early on. So, I have no doubt if we would have had him, we would have made a serious, serious run for state championship. But, you know, we were fully supported because it was best for the kid. So if they yeah. felt like that's what he wanted to do, we were going to be supportive. And I would say the same thing here. If 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 he really feels like, hey, this is in my best interest that I do this, you know, this is why I want to do it, then, you know, who's to stop him? Tyler Nickel, a three-star shooting guard, six foot seven. 215 pounds, the number 134 player in the nation, number 38 at his position, East Rockingham High School in Elkton, Virginia, not too, too far away from Chapel Hill, committed to Carolina September 16th. The recruitment around Tyler Nickel and landing that spot, filling that spot was very interesting. And there was stuff flying all over the place there for a while, David. But Hubert went ahead and took this commitment. And he really showed, they showed Tyler Nickel unbelievable interest when he came in for his official visit just a few days before he ended up committing. Uh, and it was pretty clear that Carolina and Hubert Davis highly prioritized Nickel toward the end of this recruitment, and it paid off. They liked something that they saw with him. And, and look, here is kind of a, a age-old battle in recruiting circles. Kids in rural areas, especially in the Southeast, uh, they're always going to have a stigma that they aren't able to play in major high-level D1 conferences because of the lack of competition, quite frankly. That's always, whether it's correct or not, whether it's fair or not, the stig the one thing that can't be argued is that stigma is there. Yeah. And when I say that, I'm talking about a kid that came that that um, came out of a town with about eight or nine thousand in it now, coaching a school that we have just a couple of hundred kids. So, you know, that's I understand, I know that experience well. So um if you look, you've had two contrast. There's not comparisons here that are contrast. You're at a rural high school in Virginia, and you have, unless you fall off a little bit, you're going to break the state's all-time scoring record in the state of Virginia. That was one time held by Allen Iverson, and I think it's currently held by Mac McClung. Yeah. Two really good players. Iverson better than McClung. McClung's a good player. So – you know, if Tyler Nickel turns out to be as good as Mac McClung, then that, you shoot, you better believe you take him. Now, McClung yes. um, was from Gate City. So you're looking at a, a, another rural kid there who wasn't from a big town at all. And the competition might have been a little bit spotty. So one outlet is when you play um, AAU, especially the shoe circuit. Well, he, he played for Team Loaded out of Virginia in uh, the Adidas gauntlet series. And some of the games that I saw him, you know, he wasn't an option. He was playing a different role. Wasn't as big as option as what he was in high school. Wasn't the first option. Wasn't the second option. So he's trying to go from a different role. I'm sure it was uh, a different kind of setting for him. Uh, and also playing against tremendous, tremendous athletes. So, he wasn't as impressed. I think he'd probably tell you he wasn't didn't play as well a lot of times as what he would like to play. And and here's another time I think there were some times when we didn't see him that he did play well. Yeah. And I think that was with a lot of places, a lot of, of national people also that went to see him play. They were kind of you can only judge what you see. Yeah. Um, so 
it's not to say he's a surefire great player at North Carolina. It's not a surefire thing to say that he won't make it. Uh, you know, we'll just have to see what happens. Here's the important thing. Hubert Davis likes him. i tell you what I did see. He's a kid with a good body. He's got pretty good athleticism. Not great, but it's pretty good. He handles himself well out there. He's a strong-looking kid. He looks comfortable with a ball in his hands. He's got a basketball IQ. And he's not one of those kids that's just going to be a catch-and-shoot role player that couldn't guard me or you. Uh, much better athlete than that. So I think he's got some things he can contribute. But Hubert Davis has seen things in him that he really likes. And I guarantee you he has seen – a million times more tape than what I've been able to watch. He's one of these scoured and scoured and scoured. And yeah. his assistants have Jeff Lebo knows the game he has. Brad Frederick knows the game he has. Sean May has. They've all done it. They've all looked at him. And they've come to an agreement that they like him. So, you know, who am I to say no? And and I, I And I trust their judgment more than what I would say Well, my judgment from watching him over two days because I honestly, what I saw down there, I had doubts. But Hubert Davis doesn't have doubts. He could have went. It's very interesting to me when you take a kid like him and you take a kid like Isaac Trout, and, man, I loved hmm. Isaac Trout. Loved yeah. him. And he backed off Isaac Trout and stayed with Tyler Nickel. So I, I thought that was a mouthful. And they took Nichols' commitment when some other guys were still dangling out there. Yeah, and and that that's kind of and that and what we were able to witness, that I believe it was uh, the Georgia State game, maybe or the UVA game, when for football he was at his o, uh, OV that weekend. Just uh, the fact that they put the full court press on there with Roy talking to him, Bubba Cunningham, and and really engaging with the family. Now this class as a whole. Can I throw I think, one more thing about yeah, that? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, and and I was going to I was going to talk about this uh, in some other uh, videos that we've done, but with Hubert Davis, here's my take on him because I, I really thought about it in the summer, even more so now. He th they didn't have any visitors in last Friday night, okay for the exhibition, and I've talked about other ones coming in. They, You have a lot of programs. They'll have eight, nine, ten kids come in. North Carolina doesn't do that. They've had some kids in that they've offered. Uh, you know, they had Gigi Jackson came in and, and like that. But they're just not going out, bringing in a bunch of kids in just to come in on visits, which brings me to Hubert. Remember we said last summer, it, when he went to AAU events, there's like eight – floors going action of action going on at one time yeah he wasn't at one court brad frederick and another one sean may at another one they were in unison when you saw north carolina's assistants you saw them two three four deep at the same court they identified yeah. who they wanted and they paid full attention i think that's the way it is now even with kids coming in for unofficial visits during games they know who they want. So if it's not something that they're interested, they're just not going to bring in 10 guys and not be interested in any of them, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, without going full on to a Hubert podcast here, uh, one of the reasons I like that, we talked about this in the summer, is they all see the same thing. So when yeah. they discuss the kid, they're discussing him having seen, because if Coach A happens to see a kid go off at 35 and Coach B saw him you know, go six for or six for 25 from the floor, they saw something totally different. So it's hard to do, I think, a fair evaluation. They could all gauge what they if they all see the same thing. I think that they, it's easier for them to get on the same page either for a kid or maybe deciding to back off from a kid. This class in general. David, uh, I think if you look at the player rankings, a lot of Carolina fans make, oh, this isn't a typical Carolina class. But you and I talked about this back in the summer. We did it again once Tyler Nickel committed, but when we talked about the group of four, this was a really solid class, in my opinion, for Hubert to bring in in his first one because he went in and got kids to commit. He got this class taken care of and set his sights on 23, where he's he's shooting a little bit higher up the ladder for the class of 23. What are your thoughts on the class as a whole? And, and, and what they could mean to the program, especially looking at 
possibly three or four four year kids, perhaps. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna have dogs barking uh, in the background here. You have but dogs I, barking in the background every time we do a podcast. That's okay. Your dog is going to be somebody here. coming in. When somebody, we got three dogs in the house, two Yorkies and a cockapoo. And thank God they're upstairs. But if anybody pulls in the driveway, it's just pandemonium. Or the neighbor walks the dog. We got a neighbor that walks the dog about eight times a day, and it's more than our, our dogs can handle. We, we have a three-year-old boxer and a four-month-old boxer. And when FedEx or Amazon are in the neighborhood, you think we're under attack. <laughs> um, about the class, I thought it was a good one to start out with. Um, and we've discussed this before, but Hubert Davis wasn't a lead recruiter for a lot of these guys. So that they had to get accustomed to him and know him. Yep. He did all this. He signed these kids that he got. He did it between March and late summer and, you know, August, early September. So he basically did everything five to six months, you yeah. know, work in, which is pretty impressive because it's still, you know, it's a top, it's a top 10 class. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's, it's pretty impressive that you can come in and do that under uh, – in that short of time, I don't think it's going to remain a top ten because you've got a lot of colleges now since then, since they got their fourth. They, they signed these guys so early or committed so early when a lot of colleges that, that, that now are racking up. Alabama hadn't even signed uh, – hadn't even got a commitment yet at that time. And now, yeah. you know, Smith, Brandon Miller, guys like that. Now they probably got a top five, top six class. So they've run yeah. into some of that. Virginia and North Carolina were two particularly. Ohio State, that's three, that really loaded up on a lot of players early, and now they're trying to maintain. But yeah. I still think before – at the end, it's going to be top 10, top 15 class, which, like I said, coming in and not being a lead recruiter and doing that, well, then five to six months' time – I think it's a great start. I think it's impressive. And now, you know, it gives him, as you said, all the time in the world to work on these 2023 guys, build relationships. And you've got to have time. You can't do that in a number of weeks. It takes not months. It takes a year or two, yeah. you know, to really build that relationship. So I think you're already seeing it with the kind of players he's bringing in in 23. Hubert Davis has four in the books with his first signing day as a head coach. Lots of firsts here this week for Hubert Davis. He's got four kids in the books, Seth Trimble, Jalen Washington, Will Shaver, and Tyler Nickel. He is David Sisk. I am Andrew Jones. We really appreciate you guys hanging out, listening to David's dogs, and listening to us chat Carolina basketball recruiting. Thanks for stopping by.